Decomposing body of food vendor found in St. Anne bushes. The decomposing body of a St. Anne food vendor was found in bushes in Barbridge Cave Valley in the parish on Friday morning. He has been identified as 31 year old Craig Campbell of Barbridge. A police report indicated that around 10 57 a.m., residents stumbled upon Campbell's body and summoned the police. On the arrival of the lawmen, Campbell's body was found in the bushes with what appeared to be gunshot wounds to the back of the head. Investigations are ongoing. This is the second decomposing body that has been found in Cave Valley since the start of the year. On Friday, January 12, the decomposing body of 55-year-old Glendalyn Thomas, otherwise called Pamela, of the bottom of Cascade District, also in Barbridge, was found in her house. The cause of her death is not yet known. Christian, a crash victim, identified. Police have identified a woman who succumbed to injuries she sustained during a three-vehicle crash on the Christian Main Road on Saturday. Police name her as Karen Taylor, 37, a resident and bar operator of Ballinor District in Manchester. A police report said about 8.30 a.m., Taylor was driving a Suzuki Ballinor motor car northbound towards Christiana when a Toyota Mark X traveling at an excessive speed collided with her. Police said the Mark X stunned out of control and collided with the Honda CRV, which was traveling behind the Suzuki. Taylor was spinning in the Suzuki and had to be removed from the vehicle by firefighters. She was taken to hospital and pronounced dead. Four men who were traveling in the Mark X and another woman who was driving the Honda CRV received minor injuries. Man shot and killed at Mother's in Ocherios. A man was shot and killed at Mother's restaurant in Ocherios St. Anne on Saturday morning. He has not yet been identified. Reporters understand that sometime after 2 a.m., the now deceased was involved in an argument between a group of men in the restaurant, which then escalated into a brawl. During the melee, the man was shot in the chest. He was rushed to hospital but later succumbed to his injury. The incident follows a gun attack at Tasty in Crossroads, St. Andrew on Thursday, which left an employee dead and a JDF soldier injured. Boy chased and killed in Maypen gun attack. Police have identified the boy killed during a gun attack at Church Street in Maypen, Clarendon on Friday night. He is 9-year-old Shamar Walker, a student of Railway in Maypen. A 29-year-old female vendor was injured during the incident, the police revealed. Reports were that about 7.45 p.m., Shamar and the now injured woman were among a group of people at a shop watching television when a man came in the yard. Shortly after, the police said the man pulled a firearm and opened gunfire at the crowd. Shamar ran from the yard and on the street and was chased and shot in the left side of the chest. When the shooting subsided, the vendor was found suffering from multiple gunshot wounds to her body. Residents rushed the child and the woman to the Maypin Hospital, where Shamar was pronounced dead on arrival. The woman was admitted in serious but stable condition. No motive has been established for the shooting, the police said. Woman injured in Westmoreland shooting says she won't attend any more parties. One victim from the early morning shooting at a party on Bark Street in Savannah Lamar, Westmoreland, has decided to avoid such events in the future due to the trauma she experienced. The woman was a patron at the event where five people were shot and injured shortly after 1 a.m. on Saturday, while a motorcycle with two men aboard drove up and opened gunfire at the crowd. She was shot in the lowest right side. In reading her experience, the woman shared that she did not initially realize that the explosions she heard were gunfire, but ran when she saw other patrons at the party move in. Me did stand up with my friend him, and we are talk, and me only hear po, so me don't know it, it was anything. Me stand up same way, because me say maybe a fire racket them a boss. When me hear po again, me see them start run off, so me start run too, and when me run and go back up in a one tree, then me stand up, and when me look, me hear everybody a say, them get shot. And me a walk around and a look pan who get shot. After that now, me wipe me face and me see blood pan me hand. And me say, where blood come from pan me? And then me side start burn me and realize say, me get shot, the shot glaze me, the woman recounted. She said that she was in shock and a co-worker, who was also attending the event, brought her to the hospital, where the reality of the traumatic experience started to set in. When me day over by the hospital and me sit down and picture everything and me say, Father God, me give you thanks. 
because it could be worse. Because a couple of days from now will be my birthday. And mother dead and don't see my birthday. And dead leave me to pick any them. The distraught mother said. She told the porters that she usually work at nights. But her sister-in-law is always encouraged her to go out. However, after this experience, the woman said that she will not be attending any more parties. But tell her the truth. This kind of show me an example. Me work at night, but sometimes my sister-in-law would say every day you dress up and go to work. You can't just go out one time. And me always say, girl, me have work for go because me have two picking for mine. And me have to work hard so that me can sit down and look and wonder how me have to go with my picking them behind me. So, may not think and go on no party, she said. The promoter of the event disclosed that she has been hosting the annual party for over a decade. She said that it is part of her birthday celebration, and this is the first time that a shooting has taken place at one of her events, adding that she is also traumatized by the incident. When asked what she thinks could have been done to reduce crime in Westmoreland, the promoter said that when states of public emergencies are implemented in the parish, things are calmer. Less things happen when we have more police on the ground, she stressed. It's better when them they run. It's 100% better. Me, feel police and soldier, fear walk the streets like everything first time, she added. When asked if she believes she can recover from the traumatic experience, the promoter said, This can't break me at this moment because it just happened. Me shake up, but when me go in on my bed and go lie down, or me go on my knees, for pray, me know so God I go give me the answer. That me want because me a best friend and him and we talk through all trials and tribulation. The police are theorizing that the shooting could be gang related as based on reports received, the shooters seem to have come from an era where a gang is based and majority of the patrons are residents of another era with a rival gang. We have not given it a gang assessment in terms of the assigning it to say that it's gang related feud but where the men the shooters reportedly came from it would indicate that they are from a particular era that has set of gangs, a majority of the patrons who were at the event are from another era where an opposing gang to that one is based, Deputy Superintendent of Police Mitchell reported. Mikhail Phillips says PNP not affected by a court ruling about refunding motorists illegally fined for traffic offences. Opposition spokesman and transport Mikhail Phillips said the court ruling about refunding motorists who were illegally fined for traffic offences does not implicate the People's National Party. The Constitutional Court determined that motorists illegally charged fines under the old 1938 road traffic legislation over a 15-year period ending in 2021 are entitled to a refund. The matter stemmed from a lawsuit filed by software engineer Maurice Hudson after the police gave him a $5,000 ticket instead of the stipulated $800 ticket for a speeding violation in July 2021. The claimant pointed out that the fines were increased by way of tax order by former Minister of Finance Omar Davis in 2006 and 2007 and that this change was illegal. The Constitutional Court, in agreeing with the submission, ruled that the provisional collection of taxes under the road traffic order in 2006 and 2007 are null and void and of no legal effect. Mr. Phillips pointed out that the issue relates to traffic fines issued in 2021 for which the motorist was overcharged. He also noted that the issue relates to the incorrect use of the traffic tickets as a revenue generating system. It wouldn't impact the People's National Party because it's not, it would not have been a, a People's National Party administration that would have done that. It, it comes down to the police force itself. And remember, you know, this case came into being because a motorist felt unjustly charged and taken to the courts itself for an outstanding ticket. Remember, it was this administration who set the date of paying from X date to Y date. So, you know, even the charge, the payment would have been made during now. But this is not about the administration itself. It's just about the rule of law that persons feel unjustly charged and fines paid. And now that a citizen took it to the Constitutional Court, we have a ruling, but it's going to be a nightmare in how to administer this. What we're seeing also is that the system that the government had promised to update so that we don't have a reoccurrence of what had taken place 
this has not yet been completed, or much less uh, to be started as they had promised. You know, it is going to be interesting to see the, the ramification of this and how much it is that the government will have to pay back to these persons um, that the court has now ruled on. But, you know, when it is that you're using an issue as a revenue generation issue, like traffic tickets that are in the back, I've been saying from day one that if the system is not working, how is it that you're going to hold the people accountable? So this is just one such. And again, it was not thought out. And this is going to have some far reaching effect on not only the revenue of the government itself, but just moving forward where ticketing and for what I would call scale dated tickets um, in the future. Man implicated in attempted robbery of delivery workers in St. Catherine. A 33-year-old man has been slapped with several charges following an attempted robbery on Brunswick Avenue in Spanish Town St. Angel on Friday, January 12. He is Michael Smart of Crescent District in the parish. Smart is scheduled to appear before the St. Catherine Parish Court on Friday, February 2 to answer to the charges of assault with intent to rob, wounding with intent, possession of prohibited weapon, unauthorized possession of ammunition, and using a prohibited weapon to commit a felony. Reports from the Spanish Town Police indicated that about 11 a.m., Smart and two other men allegedly approached two delivery workers who were parking along the roadway. Smart allegedly brandished a firearm and a struggle ensued between them and one of the delivery workers. During the struggle, one of the delivery workers received a gunshot wound to his right wrist and Smart received a gunshot wound to his upper body. The other men who allegedly accompanied Smart fled the area. Both delivery workers retrieved the firearm and made a formal report to the police station. Smart was subsequently arrested and charged. Residents fleeing deadly violence in parts of St. Andrew Southwest. Dr. Angela Braunberg, MP for St. Andrew Southwest, is urging the government to review its approach to the management of crime after three women were killed in close proximity to security checkpoints to the constituency over the last few months. Two of the murders occurred in Greenwich Town, where the latest took place in Whitefield Town on Wednesday night. Latisha Vassell, who was described as a jovial resident in the community, was shot by unknown assailants. Residents say there is a long-standing violent conflict in the area. Dr. Bronberg told reporters that the sense of security that the checkpoints were expected to provide have been shattered by the killing of the woman. Dr. Bronberg says the security measures in place to protect citizens are not working. She is calling for the strategic plan to deal with gangs in the communities. Fearful residents have been migrating from Whitefield Town in response to the space of murders. Others also left the constituency after the murders in Greenwich Town. One resident said that since Wednesday's murder of Miss Vassell, she has been making preparations to leave her home. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.